Welcome to Dante's Harmony Podcast, your source for music mentoring and motivation. Join me, Dante Harmon, a multi-instrumentalist, recent inductee into the Sacred Steel Hall of Fame, and newly inducted Grammy voting member, as I host a podcast spotlighting Sacred Steel musicians from all across the nation and abroad. Dante's Harmony Podcast provides insightful interviews, exclusive music, untold history, and so much more. I am very excited um, this week to um, not only talk to this Grammy award winning producer, multi instrumentalist, but all around great guy, multi talented uh, gentleman. He's worked with some greats. Um, can I just say Prince? I can just stop right there. <laughs> Prince. <laughs> he's worked with Prince. He's he he's worked with Jill Scott and countless other artists and musicians all across the nation. Um you're going to meet him today and I know you're going going to be blessed by a lot of what he has to say in his story. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Mr. Jerris Mozi. What's going on, brother? <laughs> How y'all doing? <laughs> Did I say that right? Because you know, I know everybody butchers your first name. You actually, yeah, you said it right. <laughs> Jairus, we'll see. We're going to call you J-Mo. J-Mo. <laughs> yeah, that, but Jairus, Mosey, you know, if you, if you want to find my uh, original music, you got to type in my real name. That's J-A-I-R-U-S, right. J-A-I-R-U-S, Jairus Mosey. Jairus yep. Mosey, that's right. Mm-hmm. And, and you guys go out there. He has a catalog, let me tell you, of, of, of work, uh, pr- production, um, from some of your favorites and mine, and um, I, I'm just excited to dive into conversation with you, man. So we we are missed the pandemic. We we are here in 2022. How you doing? What's going um, on with you? And uh, just been uh, living life. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying? just uh, trying not to let that you know, you know, just rain over my parade of life. Mm-hmm. You know, and so uh, <laughs> yeah, staying healthy, working out. Um, working out in the mornings and in working period, just right. working. You know what I'm saying? That's so, right. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing, man. It's a beautiful thing, man. We 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 have so much um <clears throat> in common, and we have so much common ground. Um, as far as you know, music and music families. Um, mm-hmm. you come from a very musical family. Um, I, I want to first start out talking about your beginnings, man. Um, I met you probably. Um, 1999, uh, we were in Atlanta, we were in Atlanta, there was an assembly being held and I, I discovered you first on drums. <laughs> that was my first, uh, introduction to you. Of course, I knew your dad, um, man, I, I, I you know, I've, I can tell you stories about, um, hearing him for the first time and then being able to play with him. Um, mm. remind, remind me to tell you that story. The first time I got a chance to play with him. <laughs> But um, but it 19, listen, it was we, we might as well go there, man. It, it was so we were we were in uh <laughs> we it was I'm trying to think the year it was like 96, 97, somewhere around there. We were in Atlanta. Bishop Manning was still living and um, Pastor Blackman um, was having they were having some type of assembly or something here in Atlanta. We got invited. I didn't know that your dad was going to be there. And so we, we, I got a chance to, to meet him. So I didn't come, you know, I'm thinking I'm going to hear him play and some of the other guys. And mm-hmm. well, so it, it turns out I was playing keyboard. I was playing keys for a choir. I got mm-hmm. a chance to meet the Henderson sisters. So, um, uh, I called the aunt Faye affectionately. Um, then who was living, she, you know, she was such a, she was such a joy to be around. Yeah. But, I love her. Yeah. So she she um she was there and, and I played piano. So I was playing piano starting off. And what happened was they didn't have a steel player. Your dad was on guitar and then going back and forth, 
he mm-hmm. play something on guitar and then get on steel. Yeah, <laughs> and then yeah. I think Pastor Blackman got on, but he was doing so much. So I'm looking at him like, oh man, like he needs somebody. <laughs> like, <laughs> so your dad looked at me and was like, you play? I said, yeah. He said, he said, you want to play guitar? I said, oh no, I play the steel, <laughs> you know, because I, mm-hmm. you know, your dad's just, he was amazing on guitar on both. <laughs> he plays amazing steel and, mm-hmm. and guitar, but I would, he would let me play um play that show but that's what's up yeah, yeah. I, I got on and it, it was like it was it was almost like a like an introduction to to playing with him in in, in an interview at the same time and mm-hmm. and i guess because he asked me to come back the next day <laughs> i passed but um yeah. it, it was man it was intimidating because your dad was like somebody i admired and looked up to and he was he's so developed Man, <laughs> he was so developed, but I was I was a I was a nervous wreck. <laughs> yeah, and I, if you can imagine just growing up with him, you know what I'm saying it's like a standard. I didn't understand it at first okay. growing up, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying as a child mm-hmm. until like you know you go out in the world and you understand you see like other people playing. You're like, dang, okay, they're not really as good as my dad. Like mm. I know my dad is good, you know what I'm saying, right? But like. uh yeah, man. Like this, you talk about the show buzz and all this. I mean, I learned how to play on the actual uh, uh, Lorenzo harp because it's yeah. at my dad. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So every summer, wow. we fly back from California to Indiana, and that's how I kind of learned a lot of what I was learning. I was teaching myself a lot, you know, in the garage. Oh, he wow. let me go in there and just, you know, I turn on the Lorenzo it. harp and just go in there, and I learned how to wow. play a lot of stuff on that. You know what I'm saying? That's amazing. And, uh, yeah, you just imagine growing up around him, man. I I got to see, you know, you know, my dad used to clean up the church, so we used to be in the church all the time, all the time. and um, I got to see what hard work is mm-hmm. and being faithful is. Mm. My father, so yeah, man, this is like it was like a school, man. It was like it was going to a music school, and I didn't know I was going. To, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like right. School of life and everything else. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Uh, but yeah, man, it's a blessing. It, it, it is a blessing and 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 I, I go back to the 99 year that i met you i see see you on drums playing with mm-hmm. your dad i mean it, and it's it, it there is no um question in my mind where it came from um but to, just to hear your story of how you were exposed to it at a young age being in the garage having access to the harp um you know having um access to the church because your dad, you know, clean and, and just doing mm-hmm. things there. So you were there with him and you were exposed to all of this, man, at a young age. Yeah. So. Yeah, man. I got a picture. Uh, well, I posted it on my stories. I'm going to post it on my regular uh, Instagram. Okay. But it's a picture of my dad. Uh, it was, I know it was after service and we was in Cleveland because I remember this verbatim. Okay. We, okay. It was in a hotel making tapes. Okay. That was another thing I used to have to do with my dad, okay. you know, make tapes of the service right mm-hmm. after service and he had me he taught me how to dub tapes and then we would label them mm-hmm. take them to the church you know what i'm saying help them sell them at the church wow. you know church so i did all that man i was i grew up in the jewel dominion like thick you know what i'm saying like i got the whole experience man i got to be around chief i got to be around uh all the bishops wow. uh bishop uh burns i had a lot of conversations with bishop burns and Bishop Marks um, wow. from Michigan, rest in peace. Yeah. We, uh, I remember all these conversations as a child, man, being in a van, traveling different places. And um, yeah, man, it was a unique experience, man. I, I can't I can't hardly explain it to other people because they don't understand where, you know, exactly where we come from in the, in the cloth. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's what guys like the key to me and they can't understand it until they see it. Right. And it's like, oh wow, this is like totally different. Like, yeah, man, this is where I came from. It's just yeah. it didn't come out of thin air. You no. know, me getting Grammys and all that. <laughs> I just stood head fast in music, you know what I'm saying, and took it further. But this is my foundation, man, being around, you know, and then I got to be around my uncle, my uncle Robert, which is like he he was so creative, man. You yes. know what I'm saying? <laughs> and my aunt, and uh yeah, man, I don't want to go down a tangent. No, no, listen, this is what it is. It's, you know, yeah. I, I really appreciate 
um, all of them. Um, you, you talked about mm-hmm. your aunt Kim and, and, um, your uncle Robert. I mean, honestly, they, these are people I admired coming up. Um, mm-hmm. Glenn, Glenn Lee, who I really, um, admired too. Um, when I was, when I was younger and Glenn, mm-hmm. of course, was on the Keith side, Keith Dominion side. So the, you know, for those of you all listening, so our, our background is church, as you can tell. And, um, we came from the, uh, either church of the living God or, you know, kind of the house of God, Keith Dominion. We were all like one big family. Um, we were all mother takes children as, as we would all put it. She was the founder of, of the organization, but we would, it, it, the, the music, the sounding, the, the one sounding, thing that we had in common was the the steel guitar and right. and the music so it was it was a di- distinct sound you know between the two dominions keith and jewel but the experience as you just said was you had to be you had to to experience the service you had to be a part of that type of service to to understand um yeah. and to get the feel of what it is to 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 be in that it was a spiritual it was a spiritual thing and that's mm-hmm. something we I got about to say that i was about to say it's a very soulful you said another word spiritual yeah so it's like when you get in man it's a whole vibe what they call it now it's a vibe <laughs> it's a vibe <laughs> it's a vibe <laughs> it's a vibe and it's something that you can't really just you can't grasp it by just watching it and trying it you gotta be you gotta experience the whole thing you gotta go to the church for a few years to get a, a percent of what you probably think you're gonna get like you're gonna try it like it's the same thing like i tell people like the house of, uh is a house of prayer mm-hmm. with you the horse yeah with the yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's the same thing man it's yeah. like yeah you can play trombone but i'm pretty sure you're gonna it's gonna take you a few years to like hop in their line and understand the whole science behind it because it's a sound it's, it it's certain people that you know cultivated that sound you know, and it's something that you got to study, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And really be a part of the whole experience to, to grasp it. You know, it's a lot of people that think they uh, can just grasp it out of thin air. And I'm like, man, you got to go to church. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like I actually went to church, man, it's Friday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Wednesdays, you know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. every week and I was playing, you know what I'm saying? So and sometimes, uh, especially when I was younger, I was just watching. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't playing. I was just watching and just because everybody's so good. You know what I'm saying? It's right. like, you know, so yeah, man, it takes time to, you know, you can't just go from here to there quick. I tell people it's no cheat code, man. You got to, yeah. you got to sit down and, and sit somewhere and learn something. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like take your time. It takes time, man. It, like, it does. Real. The, I think the cheat code was spiritual. How about that? The, the, that exactly. The, the, cheat, yeah. the cheat code was really the 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 time that we put in the spirituality mm-hmm. that that was instilled in us yeah. and 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 the foundation um that was laid not only just musically but right. it was just a con- it was a connect it was it was a spiritual connect it was a brotherly connect bro- sisterly connect it was mm-hmm. all of that wrapped up in one and, yeah. and and if you were sitting there if you never experienced it before you're sitting there like what in the world is going on and yeah. it's like we and it, and it goes from it goes levels. It's levels to this thing. Mm-hmm. You know, we you climbing. You yeah. know, it, it's 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 a grad and it, and it's like you get to a place where it's like, wow. You know. Yep. Yep. Um you 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 almost having a conversation that me and your dad have often that you yeah. know, it's it's, yeah. it's 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 such a um it's it's hard to explain the music. It's hard to explain the the vibe of the music. Because mm-hmm. it's just that spiritual. It's just yeah. that insightful, mm-hmm. you know. There's a history that comes along with it that you just you have to learn it. You, <laughs> you can't go blow past it. So it's like I see, yeah. you know, Robert Randolph. He's probably the more most commercial person. I tell people like, "Hey, man, look at Robert Randolph. He's right. from our church." Right. But Robert Randolph, he went through the ringer too. So it's like you're not going to find like a random person out in the wild probably that's going to just come out of nowhere sounding like Robert Randolph. Right. Because he has studied all the, you know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a study that goes along with it, with yeah. music. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you got the spiritual side. We know when you get in service 
and you get, you know, in front of people, it's a spiritual side. And it's no form of fashion. You know what I'm saying? I had heard that a long time ago, you know, a lot of times. Right. Dress up, you know, <laughs> put on a suit. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I went through everything. Trust me. Yes. So like, uh, yeah. it's a whole, it's a whole thing that you got to study, man. And it mm -hmm. shows you, um, that, um, for me, it's, it taught me that you have to, to learn a certain style. You have to study the individuals that cultivated mm -hmm. that sound. Right. You know what I'm saying? What were they thinking? What were they going through? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Along with when you're playing it in a moment, implement that spiritual side along with the mathematics and the things that you learned over here. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's a combination of both. That's when you start seeing things happen. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's really uh, it's a form of taking yourself out of it. That's what I learned from my father as well. Mm -hmm. You know, pray before you play. It ain't really about you right now. You take in what the spirit is giving you in this moment and you give it to the people. The people, you know what I'm saying? They they're gonna you're gonna see if it's the spirit is flowing or not, you know, right. in that church. It taught that church taught me a lot, man. Like yeah. about create being creative on the spot, watching my father, uh especially my father and my uncle Robert, man. So can you imagine I'm just a kid every <laughs> Sunday I get to see these dudes every Sunday, Prime even at the time. House, like yeah, we at the house chilling three and four days back to back. They coming up with tunes, doing this. And she would just imagine that that's all that's inside of me, man. You know what I'm saying? Watching that. And they go into the church and I will see these guys create things on the spot. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then the reaction of, you know, our church is really react. They don't tell you if it's good enough. If they dancing or not. Yeah, if they <laughs> dancing, it's a good tune. Mm -hmm. they not, if they not dancing, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. You know right. So. I learned that and that implement that helped me in the real world where I'm well not the real world but the uh music world I'm in right now. Right. You know, uh in the Hollywood and trying to uh you know get songs on the charts and all these things. It helped me to narrow down getting a creative melody and a, a nice chord changes. I yeah. learned that from watching my father and my uncle Robert, you know, in Gammy and watching these guys make them make up tunes on the spot. On the you know, spot. And people are shouting and it's in the floor is packed it's like to me it was watching it was like watching somebody write hit songs on the spot on the spot and the, and that's what i do when i get in the studio and people's like dang really like how do you do that like that's where it comes from man it comes from my father my <laughs> uncle watching these guys like and then my other uncle uh james robert postel mm -hmm. mm -hmm. i played with him in uh you know when i moved to california mm -hmm. since i was 10 years old so Man, like, <laughs> that's where, this is my foundation that people don't understand. I'm glad you're doing these podcasts, this podcast, because uh, I was just talking to somebody about this. A lot of people don't take the time to sit down and hear what people think. Wow. They want to grasp some, yeah, as far as the musicians, you know what I'm saying? They'll, they'll watch you play all day and try to take something from that and try to steal that lick or whatever. Right. But they won't sit down and actually listen to what, how you think and how you right. came up with which is and very those important. Are the people, yeah, these are the people that end up standing out because they take time. Hello. You know what I'm Hello. So you got a lot of people that just don't want to take the time, man. That's what I want people to understand that it takes time to get to where, you know, the best and all these things, you know. It takes time, man. So put in the time. Put That's in all you have to start right now. You know put what I'm saying? In, put in the time. It, listen, man, you 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 already talking, man. It, this is this yeah. is good. That, I, and I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you went that route. I mean, you you're not only mm -hmm. talking about your rich, rich history of how you were brought up, but you're you're talking about your work ethic. And mm -hmm. and a lot of people don't understand. Um, you, you know, for those of you all that are joining us, I'm, I'm talking to Jairus Mozee, um, who is a Grammy, a two time, two time. Did I say that Three. right? Three times. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Three-time Grammy winner, okay? He's up for some Grammys this year, 2022. I mean, we're talking to somebody with a work ethic, and he's dropping gems like you would not believe. Um, one of the things you, you said is is most people want to steal your riffs, but they don't want to they don't want to know how you think. They right. they they they're not after the approach of the music and and you you so eloquently explained how you how you got it and and where it came from um what are what are some other things that you noticed about a lot of the musicians now because you're you're 
you, listen, you you played amongst the best. You 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 you've been in sessions with the best um, musicians, R and B, pop, you name it. I mean, you've been in those sessions. You you've produced those albums. You've won the Grammys. I mean, um, talk to me about how it how it is being in the industry. As you stated, it's hard to get people to. It's hard to explain yourself um, as far as where you come from and and trying to get people to understand that church world that was a normal for us for them they walk into it they're like you know what is this you know so um what what are some other things that you that you that you find in the industry with with musicians that if you could just drop some more gems that would help them um honestly man i just like i said it's about putting in the time yeah putting in work um and I would tell a lot of guys, man, you really, you have to like dress the part. You know what I'm saying? I had it took me a long time to learn that because okay. I was stubborn. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Growing up, you know, especially in the church, when you always got to put on a suit, always got to do this, you know. And then you see your, some of your friends, they get to wear Jordans and do this. And, uh, but it's the time and a place for everything how you dress. Wow. And that's one thing that I learned, you know, coming up in the industry, man. Um, dress the part, man. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? If you got a, you know, if it's a gig for uh, for Frankie Beverly, you trying out for, you gonna go up in there with some Jordans and some, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like trying to look like, you know, you off the streets. Right. You can't do that. You gotta have at least a button up. You know what I'm saying? Some right. cool pants look decent. Right. You know what I'm saying? It took me a long time to learn that, but mm -hmm. that's what's something I think a lot of guys miss. You know, they think it's about the plan and uh that's a yeah, that's a major part of it, right. but you gotta dress the part, learn how to dress. Mm -hmm. Actually go out and shop, you know what I'm saying, get you some clothes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you are artist, man. You want you you're supposed to be special. You want people to look at you and be uh, inspired by you. So just like little stuff like this, like this ring, you know what I'm saying? Get right. you a ring, get you a watch, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but, you know, just dress the part. That's right. that's one thing I teach a lot of people. And then um, what else was I going to say? Uh, um, I can't remember what I was going to say. It's all, but yeah, it's, uh, it, it's, it's all good. No, you're, you're bringing up some, some really interesting things. I think a lot of our um, young musicians need to hear um young and old alike they they need to understand um you you I, you go ahead now i was about to say I, it popped in my mind i mm -hmm. was going to say something about your personality and your character mm. so it's it's uh it's a lot of guys i see out here they they they, they just uh i mean they're not approachable yeah it's like <laughs> you, you gotta humble yourself man you know what I'm saying? We know you good. We know you dope. That's why you here. That's why we call you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's your character. It's if you're wondering character. why people is not calling you and you dope and you dress good, it's probably your character. It's your it's attitude. It's how you are around people and how you talk to people and, you know, and how you carry yourself. And and I learned another thing, you know, every, you don't have to talk all the time. Just be quiet. You know what I'm saying? Like, just hush. If you don't got nothing to say, just hush, man. Sit back and learn something. You might, it's somebody <laughs> in the room you can learn from. That's right. And so, yeah, man, it's little stuff like that that'll get you fur like a little further. You know, it's really about being a nice person, man. Yeah. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. and you know, um, when you're on these tours and stuff and stuff like that, it's just about being a good person, man, in life, period. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I would say that, man. No, that's <laughs> this is good. No, this is this is good, and it needs to be said. Um, there's a there's a book that you just reminded me of. Um, John Maxwell wrote called um, "Talent Is Not Enough." Talent right. talent isn't enough. Um, when you're when you're so talented, you walk in the room with all this talent, and yeah. you're good. Yeah, everybody love. They know you. They they hear you. They, yeah, yeah. You can sing. You can play. You can do whatever. Mm -hmm. But you're late. Yeah, your attitude is bad. You don't have no good. You don't have a good work ethic. You know, right. there, there's so many other internal qualities. You're, you know, as you talked about the character, it's it's not it's not up to par. And those mm -hmm. things really matter when it comes down to 
to yeah. to to how we we show up and how we are 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 revered in the mm-hmm. industry and it's important man so yeah. so so you you've been doing this man and and I, i'm not gonna ask your age but you're you're young you're young, I'm 34, man. You're 34, I'm 34. Year, 34 yeah. years young, and you're you're this successful, man. You you've worked with some of the some of the greatest musicians I've ever known. Um, <clears throat> I've had the privy of of um uh having so I, I did I do these dream boards, okay, and mm-hmm. I I have people that I want to work with and things that I want to do, and man, listen, manifestations, this, this stuff is real. You, you know, you got to put it before you. you I'm a visionary. You're like, I, I dream. So anything I want, you know, I, I have dream boards. I, I affirm yeah. it. You know, I do it all. And if you stick to that, it works. Listen, a lot of people don't stay consistent, but if you stay consistent, it works. It, let me tell you what's funny. I On my dream board, one of the people that I desired to work with was Prince because I admired him so much as a musician. Mm. And um, I loved his music. And, of course, I would be at the last concert that he mm. performed here in Atlanta right Dang. before he passed away. It was the la- it was like the 10 o'clock show. He had a he did a seven o'clock show and a 10, it was a 10 or 10 30 show that night in Atlanta. A couple of days later, um, he would he would pass away. But mm. I was there. It was my first and only experience, and it was just him and the piano. So yeah. I'm, I'm bugging out, like, you know, my dream came true. I at least got a chance to see him play live and 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 just be you know and he's he was just a genius he was mm-hmm. a musical genius but what was funny is i had him on my vision board and i always said you know i'm gonna work with him but it's so funny i met his guitarist cat cat mm. dyson cat dyson yeah that's, that's we just big. played we just played together a couple months ago um she was here um with joey now we're we're working together i'm i've I'm just joined a, an association that they're starting and and um she's she she pulled me to the side she was like you i love what you're doing she said you you gonna you gonna teach me you gonna t-, you know <laughs> she's so cool man she's the best yeah. and she just started she is man and she she just started encouraging me and she started giving me insightful things uh nice. to do the approach and and certain things to take and it was just like wow i had this this vision over here but God will send people that work with him my way. And she ain't the only one. So mm-hmm. T- Tamar Davis, Ashley Tamar Davis. She, that's she, who, when, I, when, I, when I was playing with Prince, bro, that's who was. The that's singer. who was singer. So, so you was with, doing the, the 3121. Mm-hmm. So I did all those man. parties. And all that, man, I was I wasn't supposed to probably be in there, but I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, was she yeah. is Ashley is amazing. And I'm we we've been working together. You're gonna to be here about hear, hearing about some of the stuff that we're doing together. Um, she has a, uh, a a nonprofit program that she's doing to work with kids, giving oh. back to them. And we connected, and and now we're working together. And she's she's doing stuff here in Atlanta, and we're partnering. And it's so like if you all don't dream, if you all don't believe in the things that you see and manifest within yourself. It'll never be because nobody can believe for you. You know what right. I'm saying? Nobody can believe um, what you have here, right? Like that you have here. You That's on you. And I promise you, man, everything that I've written down, the, 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 the people that I've wanted, some kind of way has just manifested itself in a mm-hmm. positive way. And yep. I'm listening to you and, and, and the people um, that you've, you the, the way you started out, um, speaks for itself, um, the spirituality, the way your dad brought you up, um, mm-hmm. and I knowing your dad personally, I know that you you were you were really um, he, he taught so much discipline. He he taught not only to the to the art of what you do with the music, but just as a person, because yeah. that's how he shows up. You know, he's he's yeah. that kind of person. He's that kind, of, but he was raised the same kind of way. You know, he talked he talked about his background, but that's that's a whole nother thing, man. But I, I just I really appreciate people look at you and they think you just showed up out of nowhere doing right. what you do. And they don't know it's a story behind that. You didn't mm-hmm. you didn't just wake up just playing the guitar and, and just being who you are. This was a this was a daily walk. 
Right. This is this is what it was with you. So 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 we we talked about your your beginnings. We talked about um you know how 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 you started out. So so I remember you playing drums in '99. When did you pick up a when did you really pick up pick up a guitar and really became serious about it? What was that moment? What was that defining moment for you that you picked up the guitar and said, you know what? This is where it's at. <laughs> so this is what happened, man. So long story short, my parents got a divorce. Mm-hmm. We was living in Indianapolis mm-hmm. at the headquarters. Um, you know, all that happened. A couple mm-hmm. years went by, we ended up moving back to my mom's hometown, Long Beach. Mm-hmm. I said when I was 10 years old. And so what happened was, this was 98. What happened was we was going to the church in, in L.A. And it was only, uh, at the time, rest in peace, it was Fred White playing the guitar. Okay. Um, but sometimes he wouldn't make it, you know what I'm saying, this and that. So, and then I, I knew a couple chords, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, uh I just took it upon myself, like, you know, I know what I want to hear. Right. But I got to just start playing. Right. And I knew that at a young age. So, you know, fortunately, my uh, my uncle, James Robert, was the pastor, I think, at the time, if I'm not mistaken. Him or my, him, it's been flip-flopping between him mm-hmm. and my grandmother on my mom's side. Okay. So I always had, like, you know, a big connection to the Los Angeles church. Okay. And, um and they let me pretty much just have freedom in the music section okay. so like you know ever since that age i was like you know i know what i want to hear i wasn't hearing my dad i wasn't hearing my uncle rob mm-hmm. so i'm like i'm gonna learn that because i know what it sound like right right nobody was playing it though so mm. that's what made me start playing like in the church and then okay. so what happened on top of that you know as i'm doing that um so literally we moved out there that summer 98 i started doing that i had that epiphany start mm-hmm. doing that literally probably that month or two right then a month after that or two we would start going to school so like that september so okay that entered me into i was i used to draw real good back in the days okay um, so i i wanted to be an artist like a drawing artist you sure. just hang on the back and stuff yeah um that's some of my daughter stuff actually but okay. um yeah i wanted to be an artist and draw mm-hmm. and so i had got entered into the school too late so they couldn't you know a comp, you know, a, 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 how do you say it? Uh, they couldn't put me in a class. Sure. You know what I'm saying? In art class. Right. So they put me in a music class. Got as it. much as I, at the time I wasn't trying to play music, because I, you know, it was a part of my life at the church. I'm like, you know, mm-hmm. I hear music all the time. I can do that anytime, you know? Right, right. But they put me in a music class. Wow. So, yeah, if, if it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't be here right now talking because I'll probably be a different type of musician. I, and I wouldn't have took it as further as I went. Mm. But like, um, bro, like they put me in this music class. It was an orchestra, classical music. Um, and I was learning upright bass. Okay. So yeah, so I was one of the bigger kids. They was like, here, you can play upright. Okay. Put me upright. It was like natural. I'm just hitting, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, this is like a guitar. It's just a guitar right. stand up, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I'm getting all the most valuable player awards and all that, you wow. know, in the jazz band uh, at school. And, um, uh, you know, at, at the whole time from middle school through high school, I was in the jazz band, jazz combos, mm-hmm. and I was also in chamber orchestra and orchestra. Okay. So I was waking up 6 a.m., 6.30, going to school, practicing chamber orchestra, reading music, sight reading. And, you know, that's why I tell a lot of people, too, they don't know that side of me either i can sight read i can write out a whole chart you know what i'm saying uh but yeah man that's how i got into it though um through somebody they mistakenly pretty much putting me in the class you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. and from there i it was just so natural man i just ran with it you know because wow. it was easy from where i came from you know what i'm saying right so well, well you yeah, know man. You know, being in the church, you know, we always say, well, you know, that that wasn't a mistake. That was all divine, <laughs> you know, right, it, right, it was right. it was like that. That was a that was a moment that exactly. you, if you did, exactly. like, as you said, it, if you if you didn't get in that class or if you didn't get a get get your feet wet with that, you mm-hmm. probably wouldn't be where you are. And nah. I'm so glad you mentioned that about um about reading music and sight reading and how you learned the element of doing that. Um, quiet is kept. It's the same with me. My high school teacher, 
Uh, I'll never forget Mrs. Jenkins. She was the same way with me. Um, I didn't know how to read music um, as a ninth grader, as a freshman. I could hear something on piano and I could go to the piano and play it. And mm -hmm. she noticed that about me. I was already fluent on drums. I was good, but I wasn't reading. I wasn't reading drums. I, di I didn't know how to uh, read patterns and, and, and all the elements or whatever, uh, rudiments, I should say. Um, mm -hmm. But my 10th grade year, she made me take a piano class started taking piano and yep. she sent me in for she played a piece of music i'll never forget this she made me play a piece of music but i didn't look at the music she played it and she said all right dante i want you to come play it. and she did this in front of the whole class we got graded so she mm -hmm. gave me she gave me like a like a a minus b plus or something she said the mm -hmm. only reason why i'm not giving you a perfect score is because you didn't look up read it, <laughs> i didn't read it because i listened my ear was so mm -hmm. developed that yeah, yeah. I could you you she and I was looking at her and I was listening to what she was playing so I already knew what chords mm -hmm. I I knew what you know when it when it was major when it was minor when it was augmentative when it was diminished whatever and yep. I, when I got to the piano I got I knew what key she was in and just I just played it on it didn't look I was I was like this the whole time <laughs> right and, and I didn't look up and she she took off for that but what she did she she made me an example because she recognized I had an ear, but she right. wanted me to develop more into the music. And, and that's my, that's when I learned theory. My right. high school teacher taught me theory. She mm -hmm. taught me what it was to sight read. And, um, the, to and this day, you probably in certain situations and you like, man, I'm glad I know this is a F minor sharp 11 or Listen. whatever. Court. So, and you just in a moment, you're like, Oh man, I can go to this note. Da, da, da. It's, it's, bro, I tell people all the time, man, that if you want to cheat code, learn music theory. Learn man. music theory. Down and learn it, at least a little bit. Like, know what chords you're playing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If, I mean, it's cool to learn what people already did in the church and stuff like that. I'm going to talk specifically to the church. Yes. Church musicians. It's Come cool on. to learn what the people did, but you yeah. also got to learn what it is. That's right. You know what I'm saying? If there's a science behind it and there's some math behind it that could help you mm -hmm. progress to where you really want to go to. But like I said earlier, you got to spend the time. If you don't spend the time, that's on you, bro. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So the people that you're hearing that you like, that's because they spent a lot of time sitting down with their guitar, learning. Uh, like even my father, he probably won't confess, but he knows a bit of theory. You I know, know what I'm he saying? does. I can hear yeah. it in his vocabulary when he plays chords. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, we don't all just play from ear. Yeah, we play from ear, but you know, I, I remember my dad. Um, and this, I gotta find this tape. It's somewhere sitting around. Okay. He prepared a piece that um, for Christmas one year. Okay. And I know he remembered this. And I remember sitting down and watching him, you know, come up with this, and he was reading it from a book. I think he got it from uh, Chet Atkins. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he the whole thing. I think it was one night, one night, he was like, I got to do something for the program tomorrow. And that's on tape. I got to find that. But wow. it's something that he, uh, I've actually posted on my Instagram that he's played recently. Okay. You know, that's in his, like, his repertoire now. Mm -hmm. But I was there the moment he learned it. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And I saw, and I saw what it takes to learn something on a guitar you know it's not like it come it don't come out of thin air people you know what i'm saying With, <laughs> say that again <laughs> yeah like it don't come out of thin air like my father as much as great as he is and yes he is anointed and has a spirit all that trust me that's the other half that kick in and that's gonna make you cry you're like i don't even know why i'm crying because mm -hmm. he's, he's very tapped in spiritually yep and with god so like but he also loves the guitar. He also actually loves playing and learning things, yes, new things that he can implement to get the spirit to come in. That's right. You know what I'm saying? If you only know four chords, it's only so many, so much of the spirit probably gonna come in there. You feel me? Like, where <laughs> right. you gonna go? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, so right. Like, it's, it's, it's up to you to, to, to learn as much as you can so yeah. you're prepared, you know? And that's just, that's in life, period. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, you want to you want to be on point as a man, as a woman. You know, especially as a man, you want to be on point. You know what I'm saying? You want to 
No, uh, I was talking to somebody. They was like, "Yeah, you gotta be a secu- if you're gonna get married to a woman, you better be her security guard. You better know how to be a security <laughs> That's guard. That's right. That's right. You know what I'm saying? You know how to hold the house down, how to do this, how to do that. It's the same thing with music, man. Same thing. It's it's stuff that you have to sit down and learn. And and the thing about it now, it's so much easier now, man. All you gotta do is type it on YouTube, man. Dude, whatever you want to learn, it's right there on YouTube, man. Everybody. So are you going to do it? Or are you going to keep making excuses? Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's you know, that's how I feel about it. That, that's <laughs> that's good, Jerris. No, that's, I'm that's, just trying to give everybody the game, man. The real this is, game. This is excellent. And they need to hear this. And I'm, I'm so glad we're doing this. Again, for those of you all that are tuning in, I am talking to uh, three-time Grammy award-winning producer, uh, multi-instrumentalist, extraordinary, extraordinary, Jairus Mozi, uh, I'm so glad to have this conversation with you, man, because you dropping gems left and right. And um, yeah. th- this thing about reading music and, and knowing theory is really, really important. Um, mm. I, when I was with Ashley Tamar, that was a gem that she dropped with a lot of the kids. Like, you know, learn theory, because even if you um, get a particular gig and, and it's and it causes you, even as a singer, you may not you may know a piece but they want you to do it closer to what is on on the sheet music learn how to sight read mm-hmm. so that you can go through and 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 you know they probably want you to put your spin on it but you got to know what right. what the music is saying and how to follow through where mm-hmm. it's repeating what what's you know it, it, all of that is really 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 important it teaches you discipline and how to you know it ain't about you that's it's exactly. about exactly the whole of all of us playing together to get the you know the result you that's know right so sit down and learn your stuff that's you the, know hello and, yeah <laughs> I my teacher, if he wasn't playing it right he'll cut you and you wouldn't be able to play at the performance because why why would i put you in there and you didn't you wouldn't have enough respect right. to sit down and learn what everybody else sat down and learned right they sat down and took the time out to do it so why you can't do it are you special right you know so that's what it takes, basically. Like, it takes extra work. It does. You know what I'm saying? Like, so yeah. yeah. No, this is good, man. This is good. So, so we we talking about this and and how you started. So, so here we are. We fast forward to you know now you're you're in the industry. You're you're making moves. You're producing, um, working with some of the some of the greatest artists um, on in the world. Um, some of the some of the hottest producers and singers and R&B singers and pop singers and you name it um, you, you, you working with them um, tell me first I, I know you perform when you're when you're playing you probably I know you have a band when you're on stage how do you prepare what's your what what what's your routine what does that look like how do you how you you know approach um, hitting the stage man that's a good question like honestly um, like like we said earlier, man, I was grew up spiritual. Mm-hmm. So like watching my father, mm-hmm. I learned that like those days are sacred. So like anytime you get to play is like a sacred time. You know right. what I'm saying? So yeah. like you never you never know if that's your last time. Yeah. Either. So that's how I approach it. Like, man, this this might be my last time playing, man. Let me get ready to just you know, let the let the Lord and let all the spirits and everything that need all the good vibes that need to come through me to come out and, and bless and heal people. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm trying to receive that day before the concert. Wow. So like, especially when it's my show, right. when it's my own show, like that, I'm really like I'm like that. You know? And like I used to like I don't do it no more because I changed my diet, but I used to go like all vegan before my show and just eat fruits and vegetables mm-hmm. and um. You know, so I can really tap in because I'm really like that, man. Like, I like tapping into the spirit, you know what I'm saying? Letting stuff flow through me. Like I said, I learned a lot in school so I can be able to not think so much when I'm on stage and it just flow. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then times when I do need the theory, you know, it just, y'all just think, oh, this is an E minor. I can I can go to F sharp right here. I can play A. <laughs> right. I can play F sharp and just hold it. <laughs> because i know i'm in e minor right you know what I'm saying? if you right. know that you know you know what i'm saying you can just so go you there laugh because you know that this you, is like one of the keys to get into that next level it's that relative I, they don't want to learn <laughs> so like if i'm in the f if i'm in the f sharp 
dominant seven, I know I can hold up on a, a B flat and just hold up on come it. Come on, come on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or I can hold on an E, or I yeah. can hold on a e flat. Yeah. And go up. Once you learn these things and you uh you put it in with man, I'm you telling you, it. man, it takes you to the next level. It does. Like, you know what I'm saying? What was we talking about before this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> no, just <laughs> just your approach to going to going on stage and doing a show. But so no, you, yeah. Yeah, I, I want to be free and open in my body because I want the spirits and everything to come through me, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I want I want to bless people. Yeah. You know, that's my main thing. Whatever I got to do to get in a good mood as well. Like, you know, so, you know, it's really about eating. It's your food. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't know. That helps, man. Eating before you play. Listen, you know the, 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 it's a discipline. Eating the right thing, though. Yes. You know? Eating the right yeah. things, being disciplined, but that this yeah. all a big part. Um, I, I know a lot of musicians when they hit the road, they they just they don't take it serious, serious, mm -hmm. um, to the point where their health becomes an issue when they're traveling. And that's your your you know if your body, if your temple is not up to par, you're yeah. not going to be prepared. Yeah, you know when you're on stage and you're in front of those people and your body's not fueled correctly. Um, mm -hmm. I started this year off, man, just literally, I, I, I literally have cut red meat out of my diet. Totally. I, wow. I, I don't, um, I, I, I don't eat pork, but uh, I think last year it was like a lot of, um, a lot of fish and, and chicken. That was probably mm -hmm. it for the majority of, of, of the year, um, yeah. outside of ink, my, my vegetable intake. But mm -hmm. this year, man, I've had no meat this year so far. Wow. Like literally, so we we went on like a twenty two day um, reset, and today actually today is the last day of it. But it's like for me, it's like it's refreshing. I lost about twelve ten ten to twelve pounds mm -hmm. just yep. by eating just fruits and vegetables. Yeah, just man. The beginning of the year, man, and, and it it does something to your mind. You you yep. have more energy. Yep. You you, you can do it. it just it you you're you're in a different space. You know, yeah, and then, I'm gonna tell people while we on here about that because a lot of people do need to hear this, man. You probably mm -hmm. don't like when I was coming up. Mm -hmm. Um, I just remember, um, you know, my mom and them kind of spoiled me a little bit. They didn't, they didn't like force me to eat vegetables. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I kind of grew up, and once I got older, and I realized I'm not eating no vegetables. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm not eating none. Period. Right. <laughs> so, uh, man, up until honestly a few years ago, man, I, I figured out like because I started dating this young lady, and she she um she basically you know taught me about smoothies. You know mm. what I'm saying? I didn't know about that that I could put everything in one thing and just chug it down because mm -hmm. I hate textures of food. Right. So I know there's a lot of people out there that hate textures of certain things and. And this, and they just don't like veggies or this and that. So you can put your kale, your, uh, your kale, your spinach, and all your spinach, <laughs> all that with bananas, some strawberries, strawberries come on, chocolate, some, <laughs> some peanut butter, some chia seeds, whatever you want to put in there, come on, and tuck that down for your day, and that'll take care of your body pretty much for that day. You can pretty much eat whatever you want after that because you have at least a coating. Right. Start, you know, start out doing that. You know, right. get you a smoothie every day. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like in the morning, get you some vitamin C, and all this will start helping your plan as well. Like it's gonna help start helping you schedule things out. You know, wow. stay on the schedule. Like at eight, I'm I'm waking up at seven. At uh, you know, I'm gonna take my shower, brush my teeth at seven thirty eight. I'm I'm making a smoothie. If you start, I promise you, if you start out your day with a smoothie, you're gonna have some of the best days of your life. Yes, you period. Will. Yes, yeah, like real. it's gonna give you the energy you need, and I know it's a lot of people that need to hear that because it's it's a it's a starting point. Because I know I I was in it. Mm -hmm. I was like, how am I gonna start? Because I know I was messing up with my health, mm -hmm. but I didn't know how I was gonna do it. And then smoothies came into play. See, I start. Yeah, now you you, know you dropping gems, man, and I and I I hope that someone uh, someone is listening to this that they hear what you just said because it's important. And we're losing yeah. so many people. We're in the pandemic right now. Um, as you know, as we all know, um, and this thing attacks the lungs, it, it, but it's it's 
the the you know uh, COVID is really immune system. If we build our immune system up, the way we can fight off a lot of things, not just really? COVID, colds, mm -hmm. flu, all a lot of stuff. But we have to build our immune system up, and it's yep. so important in in how we show up eating, um, yep. what we eat. I, I tell people, and I learned this through my my late uncle, um, Anthony. He he um he had something he gave me and I, I was I, I was looking at it and one of the things the guy said on there it was a it was like a workshop and it had to deal with food. You know, my uncle was a was was a phenomenal bass player. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. Wow, man. Anthony, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. you know, I learned so much from him, but he had this tape and, and it was this guy talking about nutrition. And he said you as long as you eat dead things. And and he defined dead things as like anything that is not coming from the earth, like that is like right. that's not vegetation, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's like you you feel dead. So when right. you're eating that dead meat, when you eating the the sugar, when you eating all of that stuff constantly every day, fried foods, you feel sluggish because yeah. those things are dead, and it's really not revitalizing your cells in your body. But as soon as they do what you just said, even if you don't like to eat fruits and vegetables, do a smoothie, right? Do a smoothie. And I'm telling you, that's the way. That is the key. Oh, I'm trying to tell people. It, your that. cells are saying, hello, thank you. I am awake now. Because your <laughs> cells are just, they're looking for something that is alive. And mm -hmm. real fruit and vegetables have living um, living cells. It, 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 it revitalizes your cells in, in your body because it's live food. It's yep. live food, so you, you you feel revitalized. So man, no, that's 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 wisdom, and yeah. and our musicians need to hear that. Church musicians, y'all yeah. need it's, to hear that. It's little stuff, man. That fried like, chicken I, and biscuits ain't gonna do it. Yeah, I learned a lot of this from my dad, man. If yeah. you get him back here, I'm sure y'all can have an hour conversation about health mm -hmm. and, and how that plays a part in how you play. That's you know right. what I'm saying? Like you can't think right if you got you just ate a whole bunch of uh brisket and and uh whatever, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Pizza and and you ate but you can eat it but don't eat too much of too, it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just, right. just you know, but uh if you got too much of that in your body, man, it's going to slow you. Like you said it'll slow you down. Slow you down. You're not even knowing that yeah. it's slowing you down yeah. until you start eating right and you like, "Oh, dang, this is how I'm really supposed to feel." Right. I, I got how this felt. You know, mm -hmm. start feeling like a kid. Right. Like, like, wow. yeah. like, like I can. I got like, this is how I was a kid. I'll just yeah. get ready to say, I feel like running around the block. Like, and, and like, yeah. yeah. And you see older people, bro, man, I'm tired. And y'all can do it too. Mm -hmm. Just get up Change and start walking. You know what I'm saying? Start walking. At least get your walk in and get a smoothie in. That's it. You know? That's it. Yep. Use that energy and use it for the good. No, this mm -hmm. is good, man. You you would drop Jerris is dropping gems. <laughs> so I, I appreciate it, man. You you really uh spreading a lot of love and, and really giving a lot of a lot of things. I, just a couple more questions before we end. Um mm -hmm. who who was your ideal you've worked with a lot of musicians. Who who's your ideal musician to work with and why? Mm. Honestly. Somebody that I work with or somebody it could be passed or it could be somebody that you look forward so, to working with. Yeah. So, I mean, my list of people, um, what's crazy is when I was playing with Prince, I didn't cause where I came from, from the church, mm -hmm. they wasn't letting us listen to Prince. Right. You know what I'm saying? Watching movies and stuff. I remember, uh, <laughs> my uncle and then watching Purple Rain and they'll make us go upstairs. <laughs> right. I go upstairs. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But uh, that's all I knew about Prince. Like, I couldn't watch him. Right. But then when that came around, uh, I was, you know, I had a good head on my shoulders as a young man, actually, like, and I was very mature. Yeah. So, like, I was able to handle it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I got him in there. But that was, bro, when I tell you an uh, ideal situation and just to be around that is, like, it's insane. Wow. It's absolutely insane. So, like, imagine... Uh, you know, when I got called to do the gig, they're like, yeah, we're going to um, send in a note to your school and you're going to be getting out early. You're going to be getting out at like 12. Everybody else was getting out at 1 30. Mm -hmm. I'm getting out at 11 30, 12 so I can be at rehearsal. Right. They were sending uh, cars. They were sending like the black, the blacked out cars. 
sometimes they would send interns, which was funny because they would send interns. And they'd be mad. They'd be mad because they would have to drive from all the way from Bur- uh, Burbank to Long Beach. Wow. And then drive me back up. So that for, for people that don't know, that's like pretty much like an hour drive. Okay. 45 minutes. Okay. So like, and then if you get in traffic, that's another hour and a half back up. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So like, man, it's just experiencing those little things, man. And I got to be around, uh, you know, Quest Love and wow. John Blackwell, rest in peace, Larry Graham, mm-hmm. uh, 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 so many people, man, stars and stuff. Like to where like I just got used to being around celebrities. That was like, you know, my mm-hmm. main thing. Like, oh, man. <laughs> my heart just came off. But uh, okay. now nah, I got used to uh, playing around celebrities. I mean, being around celebrities, mm-hmm. you know. And so um, that was the ideal. Like, it was just fun, man. It yeah. was. I can't. Like, it's not. It's no way I can explain it because it was like a dream, right? You know. And I don't. I didn't understand that I was ready at that moment. I didn't have a clue. Wow. You know, I'm thinking like at the audition. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, to shout out to Tim Stewart. Okay. You know, y'all go look him up. He's a uh, awesome guitar player. But he's the one that hit me up to audition for Prince. He was like, "Wow, uh, yeah, man, I'm going on tour with Sheila E. And um, mm-hmm. that Prince needs a guitar player. He's doing these house parties and stuff. I kind of barely didn't even hear what he said. It kind of just, because I used to fill in for anything he did. So anything he called me for, I'd be like, yes. You know what I'm saying? Whatever right. it is. Right. <laughs> but at that time, I wasn't even driving yet. Wow. So he was like, man, I'm going to come pick you up. I'm going to drive you up there. So he drove me mm-hmm. up. To, I got my mom's permission. I, and she gave me permission. She said, you can go. I went up there and um, I played, bro. And mind you, the whole time I'm going up there, I'm nervous. Cause I'm like, oh, this is Prince, you know, for real. Wow. Like I didn't get it, you know what I'm saying? And then I got in there and they had, it was Frank McComb playing keys. He had a keyboard, I'll never forget it. Um, Josh uh, Dunham mm-hmm. on bass and Cora uh, Coleman on drums. On they drums. Were it was like they was just waiting for us to get there it was like they was already there rehearsing wow. got in there they turn in a, turn on the tape recorder and um well first they let me see tim play a couple songs that they was doing sure and all i did was just copy tim i just copied what tim played put my little swing on it you mm-hmm. know built off myself when they told see that's one thing i i learned coming up too you know you stay in the pocket until it's your time to solo um, and then you, when you solo, you give it to them as right. much as you can, and they go right back to the pocket. So I knew that at a young age, right? But you know what I'm saying. So that helped me in that audition because I just learned the parts that Tim was playing. I saw it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, that's easy. Got on there, played it. Mm-hmm. Um, next day, they was like, um, well, the, after the audition, they was like, yeah, um, we'll give you a call back. So that night, Prince heard it. Called me. He was like, you going? You coming back up here tomorrow? You know what I'm saying wow. we gonna there. They sent the note to the school, and that was it. Long story short, man, that was that was like the most ideal experience, man. Wow. Like that, and um, and and also, um, I got a chance to work with uh, Rafael Sadiq. Wow, which is one of my like, I don't want to say idol, but you know, like one of my uh, inspirations mm-hmm. growing up. You know what I'm saying like as a, on the, uh, you know, I guess you could say the secular side or whatever, because yeah. he's like when I used to hear his music. I'm like, dang, that sounds like my uncle Robert or somebody playing a guitar. You know what I'm Soulful. saying? I'm like, yes. that's kind of swag like that. It's like Al Greenish. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, man, I got a chance to work with him, and um, he, um, I worked with him in the studio a couple times. He came to my studio, okay. Um, and um, actually, uh, he was doing a show in South Africa, and he, he was like, "Man, I need you to fill in." I was like, "What? Yes, like you know, wow. got a chance to fill in." Him. so that was a good experience it's just good to meet people and like i said it's you get to see how they think mm. in real life you get to see their mistakes you get to see where they flaw in that wow that where they you know what i'm saying a lot of people are not gonna tell you they flaws that's right you see you know what i'm saying that's so right. like you like oh okay when i i just i learned that too i'm like okay every celebrity got their little thing or whatever right. you know what i'm saying they're human you know so we we yeah, all do they, with Anthony Hamilton, that was crazy. That was dope. Wow. Yeah, that was my first tour experience with Anthony Hamilton. With Anthony Hamilton, I was eighteen, and uh, this was before we did the song "Best of Me" and all that. Okay. I was just his guitar player. Wow. So uh, I did that for like two years or something, and that that was a 
great learning experience, man. Mm-hmm. Just being around Anthony because he was a he's just a good guy. Okay. And he's willing to pour into you like like we talk about spiritually, he's spiritual. So he you know, I learned a lot about that, man, just with him and just I've been around so many people, man. I see, ridiculous. man. And and, and the, the 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 crazy thing is just seeing you, how humble you are, how you're you're still a student, but yet yeah. this experience, but you still remain a student. You know, you're you're teachable, you're learnable. You 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 stay in a place of of I'm not too big where I can't listen, not too not big where I can't learn or whatever. Like you, you 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 come across that way, and that that's going. That's what's going to take you even further, you know, um, just just that insight. You know, you're learning and gleaning from all of these experiences. And then you you come back and and you still learning. And that right. that says a lot that that says a lot. So so you, you so here we here we are, you know, you and, and we're getting ready to con- conclude this, man. But I, I really appreciate you. You coming forth doing this. Um, people now no will get a get a chance to hear not only you you speak but give give some thought and knowledge and understanding to jerry's the person um not just the musician but the person the person mm-hmm. behind the guitar the person behind the production um the thought process that um he approaches um the music in in, in the production um you're you're working now um with uh, bj chicago kid um anderson pack uh leela james um D Smoke. So so some of those projects that you're that you're working on are these are these are current projects and, and um are you producing? Are you just doing um instrument um playing on it? What what's your approach to these particular um projects that you're doing now? Man, I've uh graduated mm-hmm. from just just a guitar man <laughs> to a producer. <laughs> that's what's Army up. Crack through. It's a hey man. For all y'all that's struggling with that, because I understand that too. It's a struggle because people put a label on you because you just say, "Oh, you just a guitar player. You just Talk a bass. Player. You just a drummer. You know, you can do all of that, man. You can do. You can play the drums, keys, bass, guitar. You can be all those players. You can be. A, and then uh, what the point I'm trying to make is, you can be a producer. Yes. You know. What I'm but you have to study being a producer. You can't just think that you a good musician. And think that your song's gonna be tight because you got people shouting and all that and all. It's di- it's a different world making right. songs and, and and like church and playing out and you know playing out wherever you playing and making people bob their head. It's a little different, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So you have to study a lot, you know what I'm saying, and you have to go in a lot of rooms and you got to cut your teeth, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and you have to. I would say I I look at it like this, man. The music industry and the music that we do is kind of like the lottery. You know what I'm saying? It's like right. you gotta buy a bunch of tickets. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, one of them, you know, the one tickets hits. are songs that you make. Right. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully one of them hit. Right. You know what I'm saying? And every now and then you're gonna get them, you know, and then you right. got some certain people that, you know, they buy a lot of tickets. Dude, they, hello. So they a lot of songs right you know what I'm saying? so so when you see certain people get a you know a grammy or whatever trust me man it took thousands of songs to get there it didn't take a hundred or two hundred it took thousands. thousands it took thousands to get that one or two that you like oh man you did it like all the songs we talking about you know today or whatever mm-hmm. man like it took like so like i always tell people this story when i was with anthony hamilton mm-hmm. So I toured with him. We did all the tours and all that. Right. A couple years later, he called me. He was like, "I heard, I hear the stuff that you're doing with BJ the Chicago Kid." I had pretty much gave BJ a bunch of beats for free, and that ended up being his first EP. You know what I'm saying? Wow. That got a little traction. It was like, who's producing this stuff? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I ended up flying out there with Anthony. We ended up working on. I made. I mean, probably about 20 songs. Wow. You know what I'm saying? In a week span. On, they only picked one song. I was wow. pissed, bro. I was I was mad. You know what I'm saying? Wow. But then I realized. So this is what happened. That song ended up being best to me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So at the time, I didn't have a name or nothing like that as a producer. So mm-hmm. they was going with this person's song or this person's song because they had a name, mm-hmm. right? 
those first two songs did pretty good. They did good. But then they ended up, somebody, I guess, gave them a suggestion, was like, man, you should put out Best of Me. They put out Best of Me a year later. And that song ended up hitting. And it's still playing, like, to this day. Like, yes. Wets, yes. Uh, <laughs> Any anything you gonna hear that at a black function? Yes, you, know you what will. <laughs> so like, I say that to say, man, I had to put, I had to work on twenty songs to get one. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And that one ended up being a one. You know what I'm saying? So that's why, I, like I said, like it's a lot of work you gotta put into it, man. On the production side, this is much amount, amount of work that you put, or like on your instrument, you yeah, gotta put that into thing. learning how songs are made. That's right. Who who wrote this song? You know, study Marvin Gaye and uh, whoever. You know what I'm saying? Kirk right. Franklin. Right. Study how these sit. It's really about simplicity. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I don't want to go on a tangent, man. I'm 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 willing to talk as long as you want, but no, it's a, it's a it's a passion, and you can tell in 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 listening to you talk the passion behind it, which is why mm -hmm. there's so much success in it. You're you're all in, and um, yeah. you you dropping. You're dropping gems along the way as you're talking. I mean, one of the things you said is being in those rooms, being in those spaces, um, sometimes just not saying anything, but being in there, just being a being being the fly on the wall. Yes. So that you can gleam and learn. I, I, I talked to. Um, so Joey Somerville, he's he's that guy for me um, locally. Mm -hmm. There's so many that are here, um, but Joey really kind of took me under his wings and I and he didn't know it but i was learning um i, I you know he we we did a lot of studio sessions a lot of uh um, right. a lot of yeah. just Despite every me. man yeah. listen i mean with top producers yeah. and the thing was yeah i yeah i was playing steel and i i helped arrange a couple of the songs or whatever but it was like to be there and to glean from what he's doing and right. what the producers doing and how he's implementing I, I was just like watching like oh okay yep. oh you know and it was for me it was just like it was a learning experience being in his studio with him because he he's you know his his engineering skills are beyond you know and he 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 used to teach that so for me it was just like even doing a, a session you know when i i did stuff here and then when i sat with him it was just like oh mm -hmm. i was doing this all wrong you know, or right. I, I had to learn something different with, with what he was teaching me from songwriting mm -hmm. to implementing, a, a, just taking the, a, a guitar lick and, yep. and making something out of it. He sat me down and he, I don't know if he, well, I, I told him eventually, I said, you, you don't realize how much you taught me. And I, I was really a student to you. Mm -hmm. you. You glad because I'm with you. Dude, you, you have really shed light on so many things that you don't even realize. Like mm. I was just taking notes mentally, watching, not yep. talking when other people were involved. I was just, I was that guy in the room. Like, mm. okay, yeah. so imagine, bro. Like, so <laughs> that's how I was raised. I was raised as a fly on the wall, man, with my dad, with all these great musicians, man. So I learned how to shut up and <laughs> learn. Like, that is a that's an art, and we got to say that. Yeah, Sometimes like, you got to learn how to shut up when you in a room. <laughs> that's what a lot of people don't understand. You talking too much. Like you, you got two ears and one, one mouth. mouth. Come on. That's for a reason, man. Hello. And you got eyes too. So watch, learn, listen. Yes. If you really got something to say, then say it. But if you ain't got nothing to say, really, you know that it's going to make a, a negative effect on the room or just be quiet like because you want to throw everything off yeah. you know what i'm saying especially if you're not the producer or anybody in charge if you're in these certain rooms that's in any room period but if you're in a, a room with a, a certain producer and all that just chill man you lucky to be there you lucky yeah. to be up in there you know you know whatever they need get them some coffee or something you right know? serve sit back and learn serve yeah. and learn yes yeah, man. <laughs> Listen, man, I, I, I'm so appreciative uh, appreciative to you, um, Jairus, for not only doing the interview, man, but just taking out time out of your schedule to to sit and talk, man. I, I really hope that the listeners that are that are listening to um, this podcast and listening to our conversation really glean 
and, and really um, become more insightful to not only their art, but to how they do what they do by the, the gems that you dropped in the conversation that we, we, we've we had. Um, last thing I, I'll say or, or just ask you, your new album that you're working on, Food Stamps, you got to yep. tell me what, 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 why the name Food Stamps. <laughs> So that all goes back to where, you know, Ruckle Street, Indianapolis, Indiana, you know, uh, the headquarters, Church of Living God. Yeah. But I, when I, I opened my eyes into this amazing world of music and just that's food stamps was one of the things that was a part of my life. Yeah. Growing up. Yeah. And I didn't understand what it was. It was a handout or whatever it is. But right. to me, it was amazing. Oh, we got. We got food stamps, like, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> my mom give me some food stamps, go to the store, get you some chips, whatever, you know mm -hmm, what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That was just a part of growing up for me. Right. You know what I'm saying? That people don't know I had a, we wasn't rich. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We wasn't like a rich family or anything like that. So yeah. I had a, uh, we didn't have a rough upbringing, but right, we had right. fun. We didn't know that we didn't have a lot of money, but because right. it was, you know what right. I'm saying? But that's what I, the story I'm trying to tell on this album of my roots um you know it's got a little steel on there it's it's churchy it's more soulful churchy and then um so yeah man like that's pretty much where it come from yeah well, well i'm excited any any um uh date that you're shooting for this year for you push honestly it out? Man, not, not yet <laughs> uh, i would love to because i almost pretty much got it done so mm -hmm. i would love to just drop it you okay. know what i'm saying okay but Mm -hmm. You know, I learned from just dropping stuff, you know, yeah, it'll fall flat. People just look kind of past it, you right. know, so I want people to actually pay attention to my, to my original music, man. You and know what will. I'm saying? That's, and you know, I think I deserve that, you know, you just listen to me, listen to my original music. Cause that's another stigma people got, you know, that I'm fighting against that I'm going to break <laughs> that, you know, you can be a background musician, come on, come from the background. You can be a producer. Come on get three Grammys because people was telling me I couldn't do that. You can't be a producer. You're beat swap. Da, da, da. I kept working. Now I got three Grammys. Mm. Now I'm about to take over, you know, and not take over, but I'm about to do my artistry, man. Like, yeah. that's my next step. And then after that, mark my words, I'm going to be a record executive. I don't do know it. what label going to be my label or whatever, but I'm going to be in the industry, man. Like, a, a impact. Well, you are a positive. You're, so. you already doing it. You already doing it, man. I'm I'm very proud of you. I'm I'm proud of the, your success and in, in your upbringing, and um, it shows. It shows, and Thanks, man. Um, man, keep keep doing it. Keep pressing. You got a fan here, man. For real, for real. <laughs> <laughs> so quiet is kept. The the um the intro. You all go visit um his website um uh Jairus Mozi. Uh, that's J A I R U S M O Z. E -E. just just search google his name you listen countless videos countless um sites he has a website swag sample swag sample.com go to that website and support this guy um yep. the the um the intro to the to the podcast uh, it's me pretty much doing a lot of the instrumentation but the sample that was laid on there was jaris mozes so yep. listen this is how we so hey, go to, and that's one another thing i want to tell people start your business <laughs> come on come on yeah. Yeah. so that's, that's one it. of my businesses as well as industrylessons.com that's right so if you want to learn my guitar stylings and, and a lot of things that i talk about i have a, a secret secrets to success course that you can buy and um i talk about everything that i went through in the industry how i did this and how you should do that how i think and um yeah, all that stuff is on the website, industrylessons.com. And these are my companies. That's why I want people to understand this is not somebody that I'm going through and all of this here. Um, I'm actually, I am the owner of these companies. I'm Hello. running them. You know Hello. what I'm saying? So um, you can do that too, man. If you're really thinking about that, if you hear this, you can do other things along with music, inside of music. You know what I'm saying? And there's other avenues that you can do. That's you know right. what I'm saying? So, yeah. Tap, tap into it. Listen, man, yep. I'm, I'm proud of you. Keep going. Um, I'm 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 a, I'm your biggest supporter, and all these links will be at the bottom of this podcast. So just all you have to do is just click 
and and just go find this information and support my dear friend Jarris Mosey, my brother. Keep yes, going, sir. man. I'm I'm really proud of you. I can't wait until you do drop the album. Uh, probably when you do, we may have to go, come on again and do some type of listening party or something on yeah, on the yeah. podcast. So we'll 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 talk about that in the, in the future. But man, thank you, thank you for doing this. I appreciate no you. No problem at all. I appreciate you. This podcast is being brought to you by Be Apparel. Be Apparel is a streetwear brand that is on a mission to remind, empower, and mobilize a generation to be who they were created to be. Be Apparel. For more information, go to www.beapparelbrand.com. That's B-E-A-P-P-A-R-E-L-B-R-A-N-D.com. Use the code HARMON21 at checkout for an extra 10% discount. Again, that's H A R. M O N 21 at checkout for an extra 10% discount. Thank you for being a part of Dante's Harmony podcast. Subscribe to our Patreon page for exclusive video content of all podcasts. Like us on Instagram and be sure to like, share your comments and review us on iTunes to get your weekly updates. Remember, trees don't eat their fruit.